In this next part of navigating in Microsoft Project 2013, we want to explore the Gantt chart in greater detail. Again, referring to slide 16, finding the right information in Microsoft Project 2013, we see that if we want to see task-based information, and we're not interested in seeing assignment details, we can go simply straight to the Gantt chart. And what it says here is that if we want to see more information about the Gantt chart, we should refer to note number three. And note number three says, on the left side of the divider, we can apply a table, add columns to an existing table, add columns to an existing table, and then apply the table, or create a new table that contains the columns or fields you wish to view. So let's explore what we mean when we say this. So if we were in a different view, like let's say the task usage view, and we wish to see the Gantt chart, we can click in the graphical menu under the word Gantt chart, we could also click on the drop-down, which would show us the Gantt chart. And let's say, for example, that we wanted to see all the work-related fields. So what Note 3 is telling us is that on the left side of the divider, if we're not seeing what we want to see, there's, there we have some different options. So the first thing it says is apply a table that contains columns fields you wish to view. So if we wanted to see work-based information, first of all, I can move this divider over the Gantt chart to see some more information and I can see here that there are not work related fields showing within this view. Notice I can add a column. Okay, but the first thing it says is we can view a table. So we'll see here if, if, if we're on the navigation ribbon, when we click on the view choice, there's a drop down for tables. There are a number of tables that are already showing in the menu. There's also additional tables. So if I click more tables, I will see not only the tables in the menu, but all the tables that have been created for this project plan. So let's click Tables and Work. And in this case, we see the work-related fields. So that's what note number three is referring to. One of the options is to apply a table. The other way we can apply a table is to right mouse click above, above the ID column or the left of the column names. It's just a blank little column here. If I right mouse click here, it gives me a list of tables. The default is called entry. Okay, so we see the entry table showing here. And again, one of the options we said in note number three was I could add a column to an existing table. So I'm in the entry table. If I wish, I could right mouse click on a column heading and choose insert column. And in this case, I can scroll down to the work table, to the work field. So that's one way if I wanted to see the work for the project. In this case, the entire project or in this case, the work for the phase, or in this case, the work for the individual task. The next note says, add columns to an existing table and then apply the table. And what that's really implying is you can edit a table and make multiple column updates while I'm editing the table. So whenever I choose tables, more tables, I'll have the option to edit the table. In this case, I can edit the table and I can insert other information. For example, here, if, it says, if I insert here, I might have other work-related fields that I wish to view. For example, there's something called baseline work. I could also put another field in here. In this case, I might want to see something called remaining work. Now when I've added the work, the baseline, and the remaining work to the entry table, I can click OK. I can click Apply. And now I see work, baseline work, and remaining work in this view. So that's, this is the third note here. On the left side of the divider, add columns to an existing table and then apply it. Or it says I can create a new table. So how would I do that? If I were, wanted to create a brand new table, <coughs> I can choose tables, more tables. I can click new. And here, I can choose all the fields I want to choose. So I might put in the ID column, which is a common table field. I can put in name, which is what task name is actually called. I can now start to add my work field maybe my actual work field. I can put in my remaining work field. I can give this a name. I'll put my designator called custom. So that I know this is something that I built. So I might call it AA custom. 
so it sorts to the top of my fields. I can click show in menu, so it shows in my menu. I click OK. Now we see it sorting to the top. I click apply. And now we see the name, the work, the actual, and the remaining. So again, if I go back to our overview, I started by saying I wanted to see task-based information without assignments. I applied the Gantt chart. I went to note number three to figure out how to see other information. So let me give you an example. What if somebody were to ask you, is this project baseline? Is this project baseline? Well, the first thing I might ask is, am I seeing the baseline fields? And the answer is no. Okay, so the first thing I can do is see if there's a table. Now in the drop down here, there's not, a, there's not a table called baseline. However, if I know something about all of the tables in Microsoft Project, there is a table called baseline. If I edit that table, I can ask it to show in the menu, which I would recommend. I apply that table, and now I can see, when I move the divider over, that all of the baseline fields are uninitiated. So this is an indication that this plan has not been baselined. This is a great example of using navigation in Microsoft Project to go to the Gantt chart to realize that on the left side of the divider I wasn't seeing the fields I wanted to see and I was able to go out there and apply a table that contains the columns and fields I wish to view. In our next part we'll explore splitting the Gantt chart screen and see what happens when I start to look at resource assignments.